Lord Chesterfield Letters to His Son, dated January 2nd, 1748. Dear boy, I am edified with the allotment of your time at Leipzig, which is so well employed from morning till night that a fool would say you had none left for yourself, whereas I am not, I am sure you have sense enough to know that such a right use of your time is having it all to yourself. Nay, it is even more for it is laying it out to immense interest, which in a very few years will amount to a prodigious capital. Though twelve of your fourteen uh, common sour may not be the liveliest people in the world and may want, as I easily conceive they do, le ton de la bonne compagnie et les gracious, which I wish you yet pray take care not to express any contempt or throw out any ridicule which I can assure you is not more contrary to good manners than to good sense, but endeavour rather to get all the good you can out of them, and something or other is to be got out of everybody. They will at least improve you in the German language, and as they come from different countries, you may put them upon subjects concerning which they most necessarily be able to give you some useful information. Let them be ever so dull or disagreeable in general, they will know something, at least, of the laws, customs, government, and considerable families of their respective countries, all which are better known than not, and consequently worth inquiring into. There is hardly anybody good for, no uh, good for everything, and there is scarcely anybody who is absolutely good for nothing. A good shimmist uh, will extract some spirit or other out of every substance, and a man of parts will, by his dexterity and management, elicit something worth uh, knowing out of every being he converses with. As you have been introduced to the Duchess of Corland, pray go there as often as ever your more necessary occupations will allow you. I am told she is extremely well-bred and has parts. Not now, though I would not recommend to you to go into women's company in search of solid knowledge or judgment, yet it, it has its uses in other respects, for it certainly polishes the manners and gives un certain a ternurier, uh, which is very necessary in the course of the world, and which Englishmen have generally less of than any people in the world. I cannot say that your suppers are luxurious, but you must own they are solid, and a quart of soup and two pounds of potatoes will enable you to pass the night without great imp impatience for your breakfast next morning. One part of your supper, the potatoes, is the constant diet of my old friends and countrymen, the Irish, who are the healthiest and the strongest men that I know in Europe. As I believe that many of my letters to you and to Mr. Hart have miscarried, as well as some of yours and his to me, particularly one of his from Leipzig, to which he refers to in a subsequent one, and which I never received, I would have you for the future uh, acknowledge the dates of all the letters which either of you shall receive from me, and I will do the same on my part." That which I received by the last mail from you was of the 25th November. The mail uh, before that brought me yours, of which I have forgot the date, but which enclosed one with Lady Chesterfield, to Lady Chesterfield. She will answer it soon, and in the meantime thanks you for it. My disorder was only a very great cold, of which I am entirely recovered. You shall not complain for want of accounts from Mr. Gravencop, who will frequently write you whatever passes here in the German language and character, which will improve you uh, in both. Adieu.